the sun, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord in his rays, the moon and the stars who light up the way unto your throne. come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his son Jesus Christ we may give ourselves to his service. The Lord will free us from the hand of our enemies, let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come bless the Lord All ye servants of the Lord Who stand by Servants of the Lord who stand. 
and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what you have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may save you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
taken in Hosea chapter 4, verses 11 to 19. The Lord says, Wine, both old and new, is robbing my people of their senses. They ask for revelations from a piece of wood. A stick tells them what they want to know. They have left me like a woman who becomes a prostitute. They have given themselves to other gods. At sacred places on the mountain tops, they offer sacrifices, and on the hills, they burn incense under tall spreading trees because the shade is so pleasant. As a result, your daughters serve as prostitutes, and your daughters-in-law commit adultery. Yet I will not punish them for this, because you yourself go off with temple prostitutes, and together with them you offer pagan sacrifices. As the proverb says, a people without sense will be ruined. Even though you people of Israel are unfaithful to me, may Judah not be guilty of the same thing. Don't worship at Gilgal or Bethlehem or make promises there in the name of the living Lord. The people of Israel are as stubborn as moose. How can I feed them like lambs in the middle? The people of Israel are under the spell of idols. Let them go their own way. After drinking much wine, they delight in their prostitution preferring disgrace to honor. They will be carried away as by the wind, and they will be ashamed of their pagan sacrifices. Here ends the first lesson. My soul
11 verses 18 to 21. Go in through the narrow gate, because the gate to hell is wide, and the road that leads to it is easy. And there are many who travel it. But the gate to life is narrow, and the way that leads to it is hard. And there are a few people who find it. Be on your guard against false prophets. They come to you looking like sheep on the outside, but on the inside, they are really like wild wolves. You will know them by what they do. Thorn bushes do not bear grapes, and briars do not bear figs. A healthy tree bears good fruit, but a poor tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a poor tree cannot bear good fruit. And any tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, you will know the false prophet by what they do. Not everyone who calls me Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do what my Father in heaven wants them to do. Here ends the second lesson. Throughout the Sermon on the Mount, Christ taught about the character of those in his kingdom. As seen in his list of beatitudes, while hypocritical leaders are consumed with the outward appearances of religion, true kingdom citizens focus on the inward reality. Their disciplines are done to be honored by God and not by people. They continually confess and rid themselves of sin and seek to help others do the same. Here at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus Christ gives his conclusion. Christ calls all listening to choose which path they will take, which kingdom they will be part of. Christ's commands to enter does not deny the fact that salvation is by grace alone. It simply affirms the reality that those who choose God have been given grace to be saved. Even our faith, our ability to choose God, is a gift from God. At the end of Christ's sermon, he challenges his hearers because many would be tempted to simply stand in amazement. They would say to themselves, no one ever spoke like this, love your enemies, Bless and don't curse them. Many had admired Christ's words throughout history. Because of his words, Christ has been called a great teacher or a prophet. However, few have heard these words, have truly felt the weight of them, and been pressed to make a decision. Which kingdom will we be part of? There are two rival gates with two different pathways leading to two rival kingdoms. One is the kingdom of this world and one is the kingdom of heaven. As Christ calls us to choose one of the pathways, Christ gives us characteristics of each so we can make an informed and wise decision. MacArthur says, there have always been but two systems of religion in the world. One is God's system of divine accomplishment, and the other is man's system of human achievement. One is the religion of God's grace, the other is the religion of man's works. One is the religion of faith, the other is religion of the flesh. One is the religion of the sincere heart and the internal the other is the religion of hypocrisy and the external. Within men's system are thousands of religious forms and names, but they are all built on the achievements of men 
and the inspiration of Satan. Christianity, on the other hand, is the religion of divine accomplishment and it stands alone. Though Christ's parabolic saying seems to picture a person at a crossroads, making a decision between two op options, it seems best to picture the person standing in front of only one gate, as the narrow gate needs to be found. All begin on the wide pathway. Christ says that one must choose to enter the narrow gate. No decision needs to be made to enter in the broad path. This is the pathway the entire world is on. We must choose to get off this path. The narrow pathway refers both to the need for conversation, for conversion, the narrow pathway refers both to the need for conversion and the continuing process of sanctification. Following Christ is a call to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. But this fight against sin is not only to conquer our own sin, but to help others conquer sin as well. In Matthew 7, verses 1 to 6, Christ calls for his disciples to help others to take the pecks of splinters out of their eyes. This ministry is marked with a lot of pain and frustration, both at ourselves and others, when failing in the battle with sin. Pain also comes as others become angry at us because of our ministry to them. Though difficult, the narrow pathway leads to life. In fact, to enter it is to experience new life. There can be peace in the midst of a storm, joy in the midst of hardship. As Christ says, I came that you may have life and life abundantly. In fact, as we walk with Christ, we will find this difficult path easy to follow. My eyes have seen my salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the gentle, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our prayers for this evening were prepared by Brenda Gali. Let us pray. Let us come before our God of compassion and grace. We approach him with humility as we openly express our concerns for the church and for the world. Father God, we pray for all those engaged in the work of mission, seeking to spread the good news of your love. Keep them safe and give encouragement to all agencies which seek to support them. May we strive to live attractive lives which draw people to know your goodness in a world where there is so often fear and despair. Merciful God, we see so much pain and suffering in the world, so much anger, frustration, and despair. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by the needs of those around us. But you know nothing is impossible for you. We pray for those who seek to make peace in this divided world, for all national leaders that they may have wisdom to know and encourage to do what is right, that their hearts may be tuned to you in the search of, for righteousness and truth. For all those working to improve international relationships, may they find a way of true reconciliation. We continue to pray for all those who suffering around the world who are affected by natural and man-made disasters. God of power, we pray for those affected by financial uncertainty and are concerned about job security, fearing the loss of homes and savings. Forgive us our greed, which causes so many of this world problems. May we learn to live simply with fewer possessions, content with what we have, and to place value not on material wealth, but upon the really important things, such as the love of friends and family. God of compassion, we are mindful of people living in circumstances of domestic abuse, fearful each day and not knowing where to turn for help. Give them courage to seek refuge and the strength to walk away from situations which have placed them in danger. Lord, you promise to walk with us when we are in situations of danger. Be with those who are afraid and give them the knowledge of your presence in whatever difficulties they face. Loving God, bless all who find life difficult at this time. We pray for those with hard decisions to make this week. We remember those who are having a hard time at home, work, or school all who are suffering humiliation, prejudice, loneliness, or isolation. We pray for all who are brought low by sickness, whether physically, mental, or spiritual. We pray especially for those nearing the end of their earthly life. God of love, give comfort to those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, whether recently or remembered particularly at this time this year. We commend all who have died to the everlasting arms of your love and safekeeping. Righteous and holy God, give us strength each day that we may walk your straight path and not be led astray by the masses that refuse to hear your voice or live according to your will. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace. And let your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. We pray the collect for this week. God of our salvation, we falter before the demands of your word. Pour out your mercy on us that we may turn from our sinfulness and walk the path of self-emptying love made known to us in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And today, as we remember St. Francis of Assisi, we pray, God, the source of all grace, you gave your servant Francis a heart of love for you and all your creatures. Grant that your people may ever adore you in the works of your creation and save you in the needy and suffering through Jesus Christ our Lord eternal God from whom all holy desires all good counsels and all just works proceed give your servants that peace which the world cannot give that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments and that free from the fear of our enemies we may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy, defend us in all perils and dangers of the night for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. Thank you. Good night.